is Thursday, October 6th, and I am back to do a photo organizing live question and answer program. We'll give it a couple minutes to have um, some people join, maybe. If you are here already, just drop a, a note in the comments and say hello, and let me know where you're from. It's always fun to hear that. We will get started in just a second. I like to make sure that people can hear me <laughs> and uh, that all the, the um, potential glitches I've avoided for the most part. You just never know. So um, I think we can uh, probably just hit the road running here. All right, because I've got a lot to cover today. And I'm so grateful for everybody's patience as we have, um, you know, been away all of September and, and we're back. All right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Molly Bartelt, and I am the owner of Pixology. Our team helps people organize and preserve their photos and save them for future generations while still being able to enjoy them today. And the live question and answer programs that I do is really just our way of, you know, trying to help answer people's questions out there. There are so many moving parts with pictures and that's why we do it. So for today, I do have an agenda. Although if you have a question that you're dying to have answered or not even dying, just share it in the comments and I'll try to get to it before we're done. What I wanted to cover is uh, a few things. One, the importance of saving last month's photos. We're going to talk about saving September's pictures. We're also going to talk about treasuring your pet photos. I mean, we really want to treasure all of our photos, but um, pets have a special meaning for me this month because we've had some changes in our, our household. I'll also talk about the background remover. This is a new feature on the iPhone, and you can see this, the puppy picture here, that's Sydney, our new puppy. And we took the picture, you know, outside, and the background remover allows me to put him back, you know, put him on this slide without that background, and it was really easy to do. It's a kind of a fun feature from Apple iPhone, and I wanted to mention it. I've also had a question from Amruth um, regarding CD and DVD photos, how to manage those and save them to the computer. And then, of course, I'll answer any other question that might be out there. Okay, let's move right into saving September's photos. Every month, if you can do this one thing, it will really help you, you know, feel successful about your pictures and maybe, you know, have them organized enough to have a photo book at the end of the year or a calendar. So I really stress doing this. And, and of course, we just entered October. So that means we have to save September's photos. The steps to do this are pretty straightforward. One is we're going to clean up our phone photos. So I'm going to just share my phone here real quick because I want you to kind of think about this. Anytime that we can be, you know, cleaning pictures off of our phone is good because uh, they accumulate so fast. But for sure, once a month would be great if you could make that be a habit. So let's just put this on here. And what's funny is um, September I had like 750 photos when I realized, you know, um, how many are really unusual for me. You can see I have a mix of, of work pictures and, and puppy pictures all over the place. So when we clean them off our phone. I'm talking about getting rid of the pictures you will never ever use again. Okay, like this picture here of a puppy pile under somebody's foot. I, I probably won't use either of those pictures. So those are obvious to delete. And you, you might find other screenshots and things that you don't need to save. Just get rid of them. I'm noticing, you know, some mission in here. I'm pretty sure I could eliminate some of those. But uh, I didn't do it for this time. And, and that's okay. If you don't eliminate everything, 
that's okay. It's just a, a, a kind of a, a helpful thing to do. So we're going to shut this screen off and um, bring back my there and then there. So clean up your phone photos for sure. Okay. And, and if you do, the next thing that you're going to want to do is copy your photos to your computer. If you're here for the first time, you probably should know that I teach people to save their pictures on their computer in folders. If you need help with that, I have in the description below my master class on organizing pictures once and for all. I also have a link for organizing pictures with Windows uh, File Explorer. If you're a Mac user, I still teach saving pictures to a folder and you could get your pictures into that folder by exporting from photos. The majority of people that I work with are using Windows. So you're going to copy the photos to your computer. And I have uh, an example just ready to go because it's always much better to kind of see this in practice. So we're going to turn this screen on. And there we go. I, oh, <laughs> that was the wrong one. Here we go. Okay, so I'm sharing my computer screen. And what you are looking at is two folders open. This is File Explorer that I'm, you know, looking at at the bottom there. And when you have two windows open and you've kind of sized them, it's easy to move and copy pictures around. I have connected my Apple iPhone on the left-hand side, so it's connected with the USB cable, if you can see here. And the USB cable um, prompted my phone to say, trust this computer. So you have to tell your phone to trust the computer. And then you will see your Apple iPhone and your internal storage and your DCIM folder. So now we are looking at 148 folders uh, that are on my iPhone, and I want September's photos. So it's 2022.09 is the name of the September folder. And I would then copy it by dragging it over to the right-hand side here. On the right hand side, I have the photos to organize folder. This is like my working area for cleaning pictures up. Okay. And I would copy the folder from my iPhone by simply dragging it over. And I lost it. Dragging it over and copying it into the photos to organize folder. This could take a little while if you have a lot. And, uh, I had, uh, I ended up having mm, like 540 pictures that were left after I deleted. So I wanted to just show you this uh, screenshot here. On the left hand side, you can see I have 540 pictures in there. Sometimes you'll see some unusual things, uh, especially if you had live photos turned on or if you've edited pictures on your phone, there'll be special files in in there so uh, something to be aware of um, when you edit the pictures on your phone uh, I wouldn't do it too much I'd save that for later not sure if that's a problem out there the goal is to clean up the September photos folder here on the left hand side and then move it into what I call the master family photos folder so at the top on the right hand side, you should see desktop, master family photos, and then 2020s photos and 2022 photos. So these are nested folders. And eventually I want my cleaned up September pictures to end up here. Okay. And then I'm going to show you, <laughs> I'm going to show you the cleaned up version because it's amazing when you clean up your pictures and you just focus on saving your family photos, uh, what, what it looks like. So this now is my cleaned up folder of September pictures. And I have it down to like 235 pictures, which I think is manageable, okay? Now I will 
mention that I also, in the September photos folder, I have the family photos, which you were just looking at, and then I made another folder for work pictures. I mean, we, we've had a ton of work here, and, um, and it's 192 of those pictures. That's why I had so many. So I'm going to actually save those in a different place. But you can differentiate your sections of photos if you want, your batches of photos. So that is uh, the family photos cleaned up. Now, saving on your computer is important so that you have that copy in your house, that cleaned up copy. But I also then teach that you upload it to a forever account, forever.com. And I'm going to just uh, show you this in a quick second. I want to not confuse the the way it looks. Well, I just did. <laughs> I think. No, nope, I did. Okay. So um, in the forever account, you go to forever.com and then um, you create an album. So this is my 2022-09 September photos uploaded. And you can see I didn't delete those two leg pictures. I should have done that early on, but I didn't. So the photos are now up in forever where they are easily shared. If you look across the top, um, you can share easily and then you can make projects and other things. When I go back one album up, so I'm in 09 September, when I go to 2022 photos, I'm one level up, you can see I have nine months of photos saved for the year. And, and I'm pretty excited about that. So uh, that's how, you know, forever is the place where we can share. And then the company guarantees to migrate your pictures and, you know, videos and documents to the newest technology for your lifetime plus 100 years. If you're new to forever, then there's a link for an intro account down below. We, Pixology, has been an ambassador for forever for a long time, and uh, we've tested a lot of things out. We really, really like using it and feel confident in the company. So that is the um, overview of saving last month's photos. Again, maybe my system here it doesn't quite work for you, but you need, need to get into the habit of doing something with your pictures on a monthly basis. So you've got the um, four steps there. And if you have the thought that you're going to do this, <laughs> let me know. I'll put it in the, the co comments and um, let me know if you did it or you're going to do it. Because that's what we're trying to do is create better habits for people with their pictures because you know how quickly it can get out of control. All right, I am going to next to talk about treasuring those pet photos. So in August, our family realized that we were going to have to say goodbye to Brody, our 13-year-old family, you know, Cocker Spaniel, our friend. He was just the best dog ever. And we were going to have to say goodbye. So uh, the left-hand graphic there is a, a snap. It's a, a screenshot from my phone. And using my Forever app, I had tagged Brody in all the pictures I could of our dog. And leading up to when we took him to the vet, we were all looking through the photos. I just shared the link for over 500 pictures to my, my two kids, 16-year-old son and 21-year-old daughter and my husband. And we enjoyed looking through them and, you know, just reminiscing. And then the middle picture is a couple days before. So then we get to the vet's office and I, it's just so funny how different life is today. I remember when I was a little girl and we, you know, had the family lab put to sleep. You know, you went to the Humane Society and they walked off with your dog. And, you know, that was hard. And today you, you go in and all you have your whole family in an, a special room. There's a blanket. And, and then the four of us, of course, have phones. And I'm like, I cannot believe we're going to take pictures here. <laughs> I can't believe it. But but we did a couple. 
And they mean a lot. You know, I'm certainly not sharing them here because they were quite emotional. But, um, you know, taking pictures, it's just such a part of our life now. So that it was extremely hard to say goodbye to Brody. The next day, uh, you can see a screenshot of some texts with my husband. And um, I sent him a picture of a Coke and M&Ms and said that was my grief therapy. And uh, he texted back and he said, mine's just going through your forever link. He was just looking at all of the photos and seeing, you know, it was his time. You know, he was, you know, all those years that he, so my husband really it meant a lot I was like oh that's so nice that he found comfort in the pictures and and it doesn't matter if it's pets or if it's uh anything else in your life anyone else in your life having your pictures together in a in a, a place where you can access them easily during the times that matter, life events, it's it's really important. You know, you, you can reminisce and, and share stories and celebrate life and, you know, laugh. Uh, honest to goodness, we are in trouble these days now with how much bad news is out there. We need to celebrate our stories and our families and our moments together often. So treasuring those pet photos is important. Now, how many should you take? How many pet pictures should you take? Well, it, it shouldn't be a ton. It shouldn't be scrolling through like, like some of mine that you might have seen. <laughs> um, we want to have a reasonable amount to, you know, capture the moment and then put the phone down. Okay. All right. That was, you know, just a little reflection on our experience with our dog. So... I wanted to kind of go to more fun news. Um, my husband actually, the next day, said, I really need a, 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 another friend. <laughs> so we had a puppy within a week. And um, that's who you're looking at here again is Sydney. And the background remover feature on the iPhone is like so awesome if you if you care about this. I, I often have to go and figure out how to remove backgrounds on my pictures. So I love this feature and I that's why I'm mentioning it. You do need to have the iPhone latest update, um, iOS 16. So I have a, a screenshot on the left there that just shows um, my phone's ready for update 16. 0.2. Uh, you just need to make sure you're at 16. And when you're in your photos, um, you can click on the subject of a photo, hold it down, and the iPhone will cut it out. And you'll end up with a little, you know, uh, puppy picture like this without the background or whatever it is that you, you, you're selecting in the picture. And uh, that's really awesome. So how it works, and, and I wanted to show this to you on the phone. And uh, uh, the phone uh, would not connect to my little technology update here. So um, when you hold the subject of the picture down, the, the outline will happen. And then it'll say copy or share. You can copy and, and it'll, you can paste it into a message, you know, um, uh, all, you, you have all the options that you have when you share something else. So copying and sharing, I think they kind of do the same because I, now I don't remember which one I pressed, but what I do want to point out is if you want to save the cut it, the cut out of the, um, the, the picture, the subject, you need to save the image. So at the bottom of the right hand screenshot, it says save image, you want to save the image there. All right. And, and that's the Apple iPhone background remover. It's just a really cool little feature. And iOS 16 has done quite a few things that um, are making, you know, ha using your photo collection more fun. So uh, that's what I wanted to talk about this week. We have um, had the question from Amruth uh, related to CDs and DVDs. So I, 
I'm transitioning into answering some questions that I've received over the, you know, the last month um, that I didn't get to answer. So Amruth wondered how to get the photos and videos off of discs. You might have CDs of photos and you most definitely want to get the pictures off of there. The um, time frame, now it's going on over a decade that we have CDs and DVDs and we have actually seen discs that don't work. So you need to get the pictures off and the videos off of them, okay? And uh, I have a couple things to share with you because there's two types of discs, all right? There are those that have storage on them. So they act like a like a storage device, like a USB. And then there are discs that are playable. Like you need to have a traditional player to play what's on it, okay? When you put them in, sometimes it's hard to, to know what you've got. And the storage ones, you'll see folders that make sense, like I'll show you in a bit. And then the ones that are playable, the folders don't make as much sense. And you can see a couple examples of what that looks like there with video TS and audio TS folders. These vary how they will play on your computer and sometimes your disks won't work. Now I talked about some just die. Sometimes the disc wasn't finalized properly. So back in the day when we were copying pictures to DVDs, we had to click burn and sometimes people didn't do that. And then the disc is empty. So each disc, it'll be its own little challenge for you maybe. Now um, storage CDs and DVDs, like I mentioned, act as a drive. You're going to copy the photos from the disks to your computer. And I have um, my PC up here to show you this. We were still in the Apple iPhone. I'm going to click on this uh, DVD RW drive. So I'm on the left hand side at the bottom. I'm clicking on DVD RW drive G. <laughs> Normally, you would think your DVD drive is the D drive, but not so much anymore because a lot of times our computers aren't even coming with disk drives. So I'm just showing you, um, let me see if I can make this be a little bigger. Um, this drive that I'm holding in my hand is a, a, a disk drive that's uh, an attachment to my laptop. You can get these on Amazon for like $20 and you have to connect it you know, in order to read your CDs now. So uh, I have it connected and I have a Walgreens disc in there. So on the left-hand side here, you can see there are, you know, a few folders. I like to go to DCIM if that's on there because that's usually the actual folder from your camera card or device. And I'll open it and there's, you know, a, a generic folder in there that, uh, the device made and I'm going to go in there and now I can see I have 34 um, images in here 34 items let me say and then a folder that says low res the pictures that we want are the ones that are the larger size so I'm just moving this over the the columns in the file explorer to show you that um we want the, the regular size pictures, okay? The low res is what it means. These are low res versions. So that same picture here is 111 kilobytes. And the picture over here that's in the regular folder is 1.25 megabytes. That We want megabytes, okay? So we have these 33 pictures here. And then on the right hand side, I have the photos to organize folder and I can make a new folder for these. I'm, it's looking like these are pictures from 2006. If you look down the column here, the one I have selected is May 4th, 2006. So it, it, it covers a few months for sure. And um, the reason why that's different looking is because we're actually looking at the metadata of a picture. 
And this column here is the date modified. This line here is the date taken. All right, so that date taken can help you figure out what um, date your pictures are. And boy, wouldn't it be nice if you had date taken here instead of date modified? You can actually do that by right clicking right on the bar. And we're gonna uncheck date modified. And then we're gonna right click again. And we're gonna go find the date taken field. And I don't know why they wouldn't just have that be automatic, but you know, these are tech people and <laughs> I did, I, they're just on a different level than the, those of us who just wanna work with our pictures here on our computer. So you, you check date taken and you click okay. So now you can see this date taken column has appeared and we can see these pictures uh, go, you know, through a variety of months. So that is really helpful. I could make a folder for each month, but I, on the right-hand side, have made a folder at the top called 2006 Photo CD. So this is the CD I'm calling, you know, 2006 Photos. And I am going to select all of these. And I did that by just uh, selecting the first one, holding the shift key down, going all the, and then clicking the last one. And then I can drag them over slowly, do it slowly because your CD player has to catch up. And then I want to copy it to the 2006 photo CD folder. And then you can watch it copy over. All right. So Oh, and it, I must have did it already. Look at that. It, it recognizes that I, I did it already. I do try to prepare in advance and practice this stuff. So if this comes up, whenever you see this message um, and you're not sure, you can click let me decide for each file. And now we can see for sure these were all, you know, all duplicates. Um, <clears throat> and then and I'll just put, I'm gonna check here, skip the 33 files with the same date and size and continue. And so they're not gonna actually copy. I hope that made sense. The idea is, is that you're gonna have two windows open and you're gonna copy them over to your computer from your disk. All right, so that is um, the storage CDs, okay? Then, uh, we have playable CDs and DVDs, okay? So when we have these, um, we can listen or view them with QuickTime, Windows Media Player, or VLC Media Player. You can listen or view uh, with them. But if you want to preserve them, copy them to your computer, they have to be ripped or converted to an MP3 or MP4 file. All right, so the audio files become MP3s usually, and video files become MP4s. This screenshot here is just showing you when you put a, a disc in that's a playable DVD, you'll see these folders here, audio TS and video TS. You will not be able to watch it without having a program that can play, play it. So you need to convert it, all right? And, and it gets kind of frustrating when, when this happens. Um, so you might want to consider software to convert it. Uh, we convert people's video DVDs um, occasionally here. The software that we use for video conversion is uh, Wondershare Uniconverter. And then um, it also does audio. If you just have audio CDs that you want to rip, um, Audacity works. And I think Windows Media Player works as well. So uh, those are a couple options. So you'll, you'll convert those videos, all right? And, uh, and then you'll end up with um, an MP4, kind of like this one. So uh, the reason why I know this one is um, 
uh, conversion one. It's because it says it was uh, a unit converter 13. Associate file MP4. Don't know why um, it, it lists it there. It's an MP4 and it plays just like all the other MP4s. So this. Um, this is a converted movie and you can see it's just one minute and 42 seconds long. So that's pretty short. Now, Amruth also had the question with regards to movies that have been converted, you know, should you edit them? And then how do you back all of that up? So I'll address that in a second. And I just wanted to, uh, you know, kind of wrap up CDs and DVDs, uh, get them transferred, copied, you know, converted over to files on your computer and backed up because those discs are, um, they're going to fail at some point. Most of them, some of them, who knows, they are at risk for failing. Okay. All right. So then Amru's next question was her VHS tapes. She had digitized videotapes and you know, those videotapes can really be a long time. Some people's VHS tapes can go up to six hours in length because there is extended play. And often you want to edit the videos, whether it's cutting up individual events or just cutting out stuff you don't need to watch anymore. Um, people, you know, often want to edit their videos. So I think what her question is, is should she, should she edit them on her computer and then uh, save the edited versions and back those up? Or should she just back up the full videos, you know, and, and save the original versions? I like to save video, um, you know, when, when it's been transferred, you have the best possible file right after it's been transferred. So once you edit video, you're reducing the quality of it. So I like to save the original video and then I'll edit it and I'll save the, the clips also. And I'm backing up all of it. So there'll be an original backup and then there'll be the edited videos backup. And uh, an example here is uh, this is a VHS tape uh, from the 1980s that was converted. You can see it's a two hour and, and three minute video. That's how long it is. And I split it into two pieces because there's two events on it. One was 30 minutes and one was an hour and a half. And uh, the programs that you can do this with the free ones on your computer uh, the PC has the Windows Photos app. There's a, a video editor in there. And then on a Mac, QuickTime or iMovie, you can edit your movies and, and, and save them on your computer. So I save these two pieces, which I don't have displayed here, but I save these two individual movies and I save the original. Because someday in the future, you may want to have your original video and, you know, and there'll be better technology to edit things, you know, then. So just know that when you edit a video, the newly produced video is of poorer quality. It will, it will have lost quality. And um, I don't really know, like, the technical thing that happens, but, you know, the data that's being saved it will be less. So food for thought on the videos, you're going to want to um, potentially save the original. I would recommend it, but not everybody does. I will also say that people who <laughs> have videotapes transferred, and we, we transfer tons of them here, um, rarely do any editing. They just save the videos and um, and, you know, it's just another thing on the to list that, you know, you don't get back to actually editing the pictures. So, so um, that is, uh, that's a little bit about editing videos and should you save the originals versus the, um, the, the edited, I would save both and back them both up in two places. All right. 
that was the questions that I had in advance. And so let's see what else we have going on here. It's been a slow morning. Usually I do these at the evening time and, and we have had more people in the evenings. Um, but we're trying this during the week just to have a little work-life balance and we'll see how it goes. Anyway, uh, Robin's got a question. She has, um, uh, she's on Windows and has an iPhone. And hi, Robin, by the way. <laughs> Glad to see you're here. Um, she's got a Windows and she's got Windows and she has an iPhone. What is the naming convention for photos? So there's a couple of thoughts that I have with this question. Are you wanting to rename pictures, individual pictures, or the folders? All right, because the folders, we have a real clear naming convention. The formula, and I'm going to, I think I can type this in the message, the formula for um, folders is putting four digits for the year, then a dash, two digits for the month, and then a dash, and two digits for the year. So if I type that right. All right, and then a description. So that's the naming convention for folders, okay? If you're naming, renaming individual pictures, we tend to keep it the same, you know, putting the year first and the month and the date. That way your, your batch of pictures will uh, organize chronologically even when you're sorting by alphabetically. It's It's... Sounds a little complicated, but this is the best organization for pictures to appear in. So if you if you let me know, were you thinking about folders or photos? That might help me uh, answer that question. I actually had a gentleman who uh, was uh, from India, and um, I do photo research calls with people if they have questions about. Um, you know, their pictures. And um, he, he was, he's from India. He was a cloud programmer. And I wish I could find, I took a screenshot. He's a cloud programmer, very, very um, intelligent, I'm sure, understood big, um, big thinking, you know, with computer systems and clouds and all of that. But when I told him the formula for folders, he was like, wow. <laughs> So I'm like educated, a cloud programmer, but the, the folders is definitely year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, date, date. And I, I, I will, you know, when you think about how um, your folders get named in a variety of ways, it, um, you want to be consistent with it. So always putting the year first is a must. And I'm trying to think if I have a quick example to show you, um, you know, when you have a variety of dates, okay? So let's just change my view here and I'll share my screen here, I think. Um, ah, that's not a good example. Um, maybe this will be. So let me share my screen and I'll just show you in here. On the uh, left-hand side here, I have my 2010s photos, and then I have the 2010 pictures in there, okay? And um, this is another good example, 2019 Spain. Uh, when I click in there, I actually have the, the year and the specific date of um, the trip. You know, when you travel internationally or, or go on a big trip, whatever, um, you take like a thousand pictures. So in this case, I labeled each of those folders with the formula. And then the description was what city we were in that day. Okay. If you, if you are back up in your like regular 2019 photos, and let's see what I've got going on in here. <laughs> I have 1300 pictures in here. I do need to divide these up by months, I think. Um, so I don't, I can't give you like a really good um, example of when it's mixed, but let's say you have, you know, um, pictures that are from December, okay? So the formula uh, would be 2020 
2-12 December photos. If you want to, if you had enough pictures from one date in December, then it would be 2022-12-25 for Christmas photos. Um, it just, uh, you just want to kind of keep that hierarchy there and, and then it will organize really nicely for you. I hope that answers that question. And um, if I don't have any other questions for next week, I will get, a, I'll, I'll do a little bit more on that. So that's, that was a good question. All right. Um, any other questions out there? <laughs> Totally fine. I, um, I actually, oh, Robin says, sh Robin says, whoops, Robin says, sure. So I think we'll be good for the time being there. Uh, if there are questions that come up, you can um, leave it in the description below or the comments and let me know. And I'll address it next week. And I do keep an eye out. I try to get back to everybody who's asked me questions and then do it because chances are if you have the question, someone else does too. And usually I, um, I love to be able to pull up, you know, the, the, an example to show you, to give you, you know, um, you know, a better experience here. So if you get it to me in advance, that does help. With that being said, I will just um, throw it out there. There are so many moving parts with pictures, you know, that um, when I teach the class organized once and for all, I, I don't know that it's ever once and for all. I mean, I'm still organizing pictures. You just saw my 2019 photos need to be divided up by month. So if you're stuck in a place and you're not, <laughs> you need like some guidance or motivation, we do have a, a great community and a, a course. Um, and if you want to know more about it, the link is below to schedule a time with me. And I'm happy to do that. Um, I just really consider it a blessing to help um, people with their memories and, you know, I'm here. You just send me the questions and, and I will try to get it answered. So that's it for today. I don't see any more questions and uh, I will let you guys go and we'll see you next week Thursday. Okay. Thank you so much.